recording. Okay, uh, welcome. Uh, we're here tonight to talk about uh, the reopening plans for the high school. Um, best way for me to do that is to share a presentation with you. Uh, there are really no bad questions, so I'm encouraging you to uh, put your questions into the chat um, so that we can all arrive at greater understandings as to how this is going to look and how it's going to work for your uh, impacted students. So I'm going to share my screen uh, for it, our presentation. Uh, it's, it's a very brief presentation. Why is it so brief? Uh, because we're ready um, and there is not uh, drastic changes that need to be made for us to pivot from our hybrid plan to our um, full return plan. In the summer, as part of our reopening committee, we prepared for three types of learning plans, uh, knowing or thinking and believing that we would need all three. Uh, and so this uh, has been ready uh, and we are ready to pivot after April vacation. So it is a pretty um, straightforward reopening plan. I will share now. Okay, um, so it's uh, this is there a lot of information on this slide here. Um, basically, what what does this all mean? It, it just means that the the hybrid plan is going away. There is no more hybrid plan afforded to students. Um, there are, will be no more cohorts. There will be no more hybrid in and hybrid out. There will be no more full remote Mondays. So the hybrid learning plan and all that has gone into it from September through April vacation. Uh, will cease to exist after April 26. There will be no more learning plan in hybrid. Our current remote numbers are 87 students and we have 628 uh, students in the hybrid. So uh, all of families have been surveyed to determine if they're going to uh, stay in person, meaning come into the building or shift to the remote learning plan. Both are our possibilities for families. And we have had uh, families communicate to us that they are interested in going in both directions, going from a hybrid schedule to remote and from remote into a full return. So that those are happening um, and we can accommodate those changes in learning plans. Uh, we will continue to follow state and DESE guidelines. Uh, part of those guidelines continue below. We will eat at six feet of distancing. There's no way around it, six feet of distancing. Uh, to accommodate 700 students or 650 students in the building for lunches. Um, right now, this current school year, right now in the hybrid plan, we have three lunches and there is seating for 115 students in the CAF. Um, we will move to four lunches after April vacation and we will invite our juniors and seniors to eat outside. Over April vacation, a 33 by 60 foot uh, tent is going into the courtyard to allow for lunches in inclement weather, as well as mask breaks in inclement weather. We were going to continue to ask our students and families to self-monitor for symptoms and health. Uh, the biggest change that is coming in this learning plan and this shift is space and spacing. So our classrooms will be set up for three to four feet of distance between student work space uh, work spaces. I'm not saying desks because in some areas they're not desks, they're tables. So we are shifting at present, we are six feet for our hybrid plan. Our full return plan calls for three to four feet of uh, distance between student work spaces. So this is the big thing I've tried to talk to students about. Um, this increases the possibility of being a close contact. So let's jump into a math class today. If there was a student in math today who has COVID-19, uh, we, through our contact tracing, provided that our desks are six feet apart, which they are all set up for, we do not have to contact trace in that classroom. Moving to three to four feet, a COVID positive person does lead to contact tracing of those seated around them. So that is a big change, okay? So the contact tracing now will go into the classrooms because of the space between workstations. Um, I think an important point to consider is I've participated in these at the elementary school level for my own children. Um, 
we do not have to change classroom teachers. All of our students will remain with the same classroom teachers. They may have to change the location of their classroom from say a smaller room to a bigger room to accommodate more students. Uh, but actually, uh, we did the exercise today. Uh, there actually are fewer teachers that have to move locations than there were in the hybrid. Uh, the hybrid with six feet apart, we had some very small classrooms that had to move. Uh, now, when we go to three to four feet, we're able to bring teachers back to their home bases. So there's actually fewer classroom changes in our full return plan. Please keep in mind, so uh, regardless of what plan you're in, the full return or the remote learning plan, so the students that are learning from home, class times will change after April vacation. I will share a slide with you that talks about the class times. Both learning plans, full return and remote, have to be on the same uh, bell schedule, all right, because of our classroom teachers and, and how we're deploying our teachers. Now, our upper class students, the second bullet, our upper class students are used to an eight day rotating alternating schedule. We will not rotate our blocks over eight days like we have done in the past. We want students this year to finish just by running a day one and a day two schedule. So we will, and this is what students are familiar and comfortable with based on this year. We have not rotated the blocks this year. So we will run day one, then we'll run day two and we will alternate. So April 26th is our last full remote Monday, Tuesday the 27th, day one, Wednesday the 28th, day two, Thursday the 29th, day one, and we go from there all the way through the uh, rest of the school year. The last day of classes for seniors is May 27th. The last day of classes for students is later in June with a final exam schedule. So we will now have a two-day rotating schedule every other day, A and B. The third bullet, classes will be 85 minutes, which they are now, and we will mandate an eight to nine minute outdoor mask break. Okay, uh, eight to nine minutes seems and feels arbitrary for some. Uh, why eight to nine minutes? Because that's what our school nurse tells us will prevent those close contacts, okay? Especially, especially with masks uh, off outdoors. We need to be six feet apart outdoors, but if we're under 10 minutes, we know for sure we'll keep those kids safe from close contacts. Uh, no longer full remote Mondays. And there's no such thing as a hybrid out session or a hybrid out check-in. There are no uh, cohorts. Uh, the last bullet, students in the remote plan will remain on grad point uh, with the same classroom teachers serving as their grad point supervisors. So that won't change for our remote students. The only thing that changes will be the times that classes meet, which leads us to our next slide. Uh, here's the schedule. It, it's a very easy schedule for students, whether you're in the hybrid or, excuse me, the remote or the full return plan. We are accustomed to 85 minute classes. We use five minutes of passing time so that we can space and stagger our students through the hallways. That will continue. They are used to doing that. They are used to the colors. We announce at 8.55, all green classrooms can move. Then we go to, I think, what's orange, then apricot, then lavender. They spell goal. So we're setting goals to be safe during passing time. Block two, block three. Block three gets a little... Um, uh, I would say a little bit longer and a little bit more uh, involved because we have now four lunches. Kids are used to three lunches. We have to move to four lunches. So that's one of the things that classroom teachers need to communicate to students between now and April 27th. Teachers got their lunch assignments this week. They can now begin informing their students, hey, we've got first lunch, second lunch, third lunch, whatever it may be on day one. And then the same for day two, we'll wrap up our day with a block four. And so it, this is very consistent with what we've been doing this year with the exception of a fourth lunch added. Uh, very important that Google Classrooms and learning management systems will be maintained. So the teachers will continue the, with those learning management systems in case we pivot. Uh, I don't know if you've been following, but there are some schools on the Cape that had to, they pivoted in and then they had to pivot back out into a full uh, remote plan. So depending upon how uh, the health and safety of our community uh, is, we, we just wanna be ready in, in case we need to pivot back out. 
okay? Also, those Google Classrooms will be updated to provide support for quarantine students. As I said, we've now increased the number of close contacts in this learning plan. So it is important for us that we do not lose sight of our quarantine students. So the next bullet, uh, we are handling it similarly to how we've handled an absence in the past where a student is given work and um, they, have, they get time to make up work. We're not gonna penalize students for um, work that's turned in when they return. It's assigned in the learning management system and returned when they, uh, when they can complete the work. The big thing is we, we felt it was so important because of our hybrid out model where kids were used to zooming in from home with classroom teachers to have question and answer to have kind of a help desk feature for kids. We thought it was so important to maintain that. So we will provide students the chance to work with their teachers from home throughout the day. So each day we'll be sending students, if you are quarantined, we will give you a list of the times of day. It'll follow the four blocks of, of the day when the, your classroom teacher is available, okay? Uh, and it'll be available for that live stream interactive video conference. Our timeline, uh, the desks began moving on March 17th. We spent the whole day on March 22nd preparing to pivot. We hosted a Q&A for students March 29th. Uh, this week, we had senior class meetings. I felt like if we could get the seniors to buy in, we could all buy in. We had awesome meetings the last two days. We also had a, a meeting for our remote students. They had a Q&A. We're hosting tonight, Q&A for parents. And then the 26th is our last full remote Monday. I advised our teachers to use those video conferences on the 26th to kind of reset the table for their classes because students are going to walk in on the 27th to a seating plan, to um, different times of classes, to different lunch periods, uh, to different colors of passing time. So just to kind of reacquaint students with our expectations on the 26th so that the 27th can go uh, according to plan. So that is our, our our presentation. Um, I feel like it's it's relatively straightforward for our kids. I think our kids are ready for this. I think they can handle the change. There's not a lot of change beyond spacing. It's all about spacing for kids, okay, and desks. Question, is, are there final exams this year? Uh, that's in the chat. So yes, we have decided for, we're not going to call them final exams. We're going to call them uh, term four assessments as a way to do a number of things. Uh, bring closure to the school year. Identify gaps in learning that we can use for the fall as we pr plan our fall curriculum. Um, but they will not count as typical traditional final exams have counted 12% over the years. They will not count as 12%. They will just be an assessment uh, included in the term four grade. So how will we arrive at grades this year for underclassmen and for seniors? We will arrive at grades. Each term counts as 25%. If you're in a half year class, each term counts as 50%. That's an excellent question. We have that information ready to go for families uh, as to when those final exams, again, we don't want to use that word, those term four assessments can be uh, taken. I'll make a note of that. Uh, will AP classes have term four assessments? They will not. Uh, historically, AP exams has been the final assessment for AP students. Good question. If a senior has a study in block one and two, can they just show up for blocks three and four? Yes, they can. Seniors have the privilege of coming in late for their directed studies. Other questions into the chat. My presentation's done. I'm here now to answer as many questions as you have. We, we've done a number of different student questions and answer sessions and they've gone well. I feel like the kids understand and they're ready. Um, I, again, I think it speaks to the hybrid schedule that we had, that it's, it was very easy to pivot this way. Will a student still be quarantined as a close contact if they have been fully vaccinated? Uh, if you are vaccinated post two weeks uh, after your last shot, uh, you do not have to quarantine. Excellent question. 
Uh, when do the senior privileges start? Senior privileges for those directed studies begin after April vacation. Are lockers off limits? Yes, we will not be using lockers. Um, students will continue to carry their belongings with them. If a junior has a study first block, do they have to come in for first period? Yes, they do. Uh, all students have to be in prior to nine o'clock if they're gonna participate in sports, but um, only seniors can come in late. So if a, if a junior has a first block study, they do have to attend. That being said about a directed study, um, our, our class that earns credit has an attendance policy and you can lose credit if you exceed your attendance limit. Uh, we do not issue credit in a directed study. So if a parent wanted to send a student in with a note excusing them that day, that we would accept that note uh, and it would, it's penalty free because it's not a credit earning course. Will there be AP exams at school this year? Yes, there will. We are. Uh, there are three AP test windows. We are going to test in the first window in the first week in May, first two weeks in May. Why the first window? It gives us an opportunity if a student is quarantined to have them test in later windows as well. Uh, will there be hands-on science labs? There will be modified science labs based on updated guidance and guidelines. Um, and we are, when I was talking about student workstations, uh, I was really referring to those lab courses. So students will have the opportunity to be working around lab tables. Other questions? This is good. Nobody's asked about prom yet. That's good. Nobody's asked about it. That's good, good, good. Will clubs and other extracurriculars occur in school? Yes, they have been and will continue to occur in school if the advisor feels like they can do so safely. Um, we've asked some, some clubs have resumed in person meetings. We've asked our um, staff that supervises uh, to create a safety plan for all activities. Uh, and we are utilizing our e hallway pass software to contact Trace and to maintain um, an accurate record of who's in the building. Uh, tell us about the prom, please. <laughs> so we were ready to go with prom. We, we, we had a location, a date and all of that good stuff. We, we shared with the school committee at our last school committee meeting, uh, the wonderful plans of prom. And then on April Fool's Day, the state dropped an April Fool's bomb on us, uh, advising against prom <laughs> and uh, encouraging people to hold proms after graduation. And so we have to uh, you know, make some decisions around uh, what type of prom or senior um, senior event will we host? So tell us about prom. I wish I could. We're not there yet. Junior semi-formal. So that's like prom's little sibling. Um, once we have a prom plan, we can even consider a junior semi, which terrifies me because um, there are no guidelines for junior semis, but we'll probably adopt whatever we do for a prom. When will spring sports start? Eek. Um, I believe the first week in May. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I can, um, when I send out the recording of this to parents, I will include a spring sport date in the email. It's a good question. Last year when seniors graduated, they couldn't have any school promoted events such as prom. How is it different this year? The guidelines have changed. That's the straight answer. Um, the guidelines have changed. Um, Guidelines have changed, you know, and we, we adjust to the changes each time they do. Uh, the, the graduation guidelines have not changed. So graduation will likely look like it did last year, which I thought was a very uh, proper send off for seniors last year. So that will be, um, that will be nice. Other questions?
Any idea how many tickets each family will get for graduation? Awesome question. Likely six tickets per, per graduate. Awesome question. Six tickets per graduate, likely. We learned a lot from last year's graduation. Um, we actually started talking about it today and um, it, it'll look a lot like last year. The guidelines from graduation haven't changed. Uh, socially distanced, uh, guests register in advance. Um, keep, the, keep the ceremony brief, which kills me because I like to talk. So, you know, the guidelines haven't really changed. We will be taking the bus for the first time this year. What are the guidelines for buses and distancing? So uh, buses after the bus guidelines changed. That's really what the impetus was for many schools to pivot back to in-person. Once the bus guidelines changed, uh, it, it um, kind of cleared the way for a more of a full person return, full student return. Um, so what would the changes be on the buses? Uh, nothing will change except capacity increased that's the big thing capacity increased so students will have their assigned seats uh, it's important to know those assigned seats uh, to help with contact tracing uh, for example i am the uh, leader of an after school club uh, that takes buses i produce to the bus driver here's our seating plan for today this is where we're sitting in the event that we need a close contact um, so that's the, uh, the, the bus guidelines. You'll be assigned a seat. And if, if you need a close contact, contact tracing, those, we will do that exercise. When might the decision for prom come out? Um, so no one brought it, no one's bought a ticket yet. So that's good. So no one's out any money. I'm sure we've bought dresses and made plans and done that sort of thing. So when will the decision for prom come out? We met Monday, we being myself, the class advisors and the uh, student leaders, we met, um, we developed a game plan. Uh, we are, whatever we do, we'll need um, Board of Health approval. And uh, we would like the approval of our central office and school committee. So we're uh, uh, moving forward to set up meetings to plan. So when would a decision come out? I wish I could tell you, I don't have one right now. If prom is outdoors, could dates from other schools be invited? No, the capacity for a prom is 150. We have 188, um, 188 seniors. So that's not gonna work. The math won't work. No matter what we do for prom, it will be closed to our seniors, closed off to only our seniors. If, since you're in the prom mood, I had a meeting today with 10 other high schools along the South Coast. Seekonk is hosting a prom at Gillette Stadium. No dance floor. Uh, they're calling it a senior celebration. They're serving dinner. Two hours in and out, no dancing. Case High School, Lakeview Pavilion, only 95 kids going. Uh, no dancing. Dinner and get out of there. Uh, Fairhaven and, and, and us, we're working together because we were going to sh uh, share the cost of a tent at Shining Tides. So we are staying in close contact with Fairhaven. They're leaning towards a dinner and no dancing. So you, you want to talk prom, we're talking prom. Other questions? New Bedford Vogue, no plan for prom. Wareham High School, trying to keep their cost to $40 a ticket. Good luck. Nobody's been able to fundraise. Any other questions about our full return? Just for a point of clarification, that was Somerset that's going to Gillette Stadium, not Seacock. Last call for questions. I appreciate everybody coming out tonight. And um, if you if you want to ask me a question, you can always send me an email. Uh, this has been recorded. The recording will go out tomorrow. And in, within that recording and that email, we'll have a, win, a spring sports date. Uh, it will have um, a final exam schedule. I think those are important things to get in your hands now. 
um, and you know, provide you as much information as we can. Thank you, everybody. Have a great evening.